So here we have a dryer that's not heating well or is not heating at all. First thing I advise is to always check it before you dig into it. See what it does. It's always a good idea to check that vent too. So it's not, have it on settings on high, should be heating. There's no heat. So, first thing we do is check the voltage at the socket. And so, Get our handy dandy meter out here and set it for voltage AC. We're going to set it for set it for. Seven hundred volts because we want to make sure and test both legs of that socket so that we have two twenty volts at the socket. So we want to test both sides of this here. And Okay, so we've got the front off. These are kind of tricky clips. Basically, you have to stick a flathead screwdriver in here to push this sort of down and then pull out on it when you take it out. out. Yeah, so they're just kind of tricky little clips that uh, you got to get a flathead screwdriver to stick in there. So you can see this one has quite a bit of lint built up in it. It's probably been five years since this has been cleaned out and you can see in here we have at least probably maybe a third clog on that Let's see we've got quite a build of build up here that this has to be cleaned it all has to be cleaned and uh, so uh, ideally it should be all taken apart and so basically, before I dig into this, I'm not going to take a chance on getting bit, so I'm just going to unplug it. And so I'm going to take the meter, and this is the most common problem here. You can pretty much check everything from here. This is a four roller system, basically. In order to take this apart, you have to take the screws off the back top panel and then slide this top part off and then you can access the screws that hold this front panel on. And then you can take the whole front panel off. I'm not going to do that. The drawer's not squeaking, so I'm not going to mess with it right now, I don't think. Um, but we can access most of the heating uh, circuit right here. This this double uh, wire, uh, blue wire, that is the thermal cutoff fuse. Basically, um, it's a non-resettable fuse that has to be replaced if it's burnt. And basically, we we're simply looking for continuity on that on that unit. So uh, once again, I have the unit unplugged. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this like this. But basically what we're trying to do is get, find if we have continuity between this terminal and this terminal. I'm, I'm isolating it from the circuit just to be double sure that we're not getting any reading from the circuit. So I'm going to check for continuity between these two terminals. And so we should find continuity. If we have continuity, it's going to be on the heat element 
or there's a thermal cutoff on the heat element as well. So, see if you can see that. It's a little tricky. Ideally, we want to pull the whole thing apart. Yeah, so there's a thermal cutout fuse, uh, thermostat, and the heat element. It could be one of those three items as well. But let's check the continuity on the the blower thermal cutout. And so this one here, we're going across these two terminals to see if we have continuity. So we set the meter on ohms and I like to go with the the tone so that no, my tone is not really good. There it is. So that I don't have to look at the meter and I can look and see um, here. Now, this is going to be kind of tricky to do. But basically, I'm going to set the camera down, start over. Basically, we're going to look for continuity between these two terminals here. And actually, we do have continuity. So that is good. So it's that indicates that it has good flow um, through the venting system. So the venting system will blow that fuse if it's backed up. So next thing we're going to look at is we're going to look for continuity on the heat element. And sometimes it's a good idea just to leave these out of the circuit so that we don't, we have a, uh, we don't get a false reading, so we have a disconnect in the circuit. So the next thing we can easily check is the heat element. Once again, the unit is unplugged, and we're looking for continuity here across these two. And so we don't have any continuity, so it's going to be this heat element. So this heat element, I don't have... Um, with me. So this heat element we're going to take apart and we're going to take the whole thing apart and then we're going to lube everything, clean and lube it, and then we're going to tie the heat element for temporary fix. Okay, so we're going to take this thing apart. We're going to um, take the top off or get the top loose. We're not going to re totally remove it. We're just taking it loose. So there's some screws along here, the quarter inch screws along the back here that have to be removed. So we remove those. Once we've got them removed, then we're going to sort of lift up and pull forward. And then we can access this front screws here. Now these actually have torques on them. I haven't seen torques on these for a while. But there's going to be a torques on that one. In order to pull that off, we have to use a Torx driver to pull that uh, out of there. So I have to get my Torx, and then we'll be able, we'll have to loosen these screws here and here, and then we can pull the whole front panel off and the drum out, and we can access heat element, and we can lube all the. Okay, so we have the inside. the front panel loose off, and. There was still quite a bit of lint inside here. You can see the lint built up on the motor. This will cause early failure of the motor. And we'll have to clean that off. And then we can access the heat element. We probably could have accessed the heating element from the bottom, but I might as well do this because it's going to prolong the life of the motor. And basically, we're going to lube all the, the moving parts to make them last a little bit longer. And uh, we're going to take that heating element apart and tie that together temporarily. Um, so we're in sort of an uh, isolated Northern California town and the heat element, I'd have to order it. And so... That would be a while, and her laundry is already backing up, so I'm just going to do a temporary fix on this one.
Okay, so we got the heat element out. There's only one screw basically that holds this heat element in place. It's that rack. Well, there's a rack and then there's a screw that mounts it to the base. But anyway, here's the heat element. It's out of here. And if we look at it, we don't really want to be touching this if we're going to be tying it. If we look at it, there may not be any... Okay, so there's the brake right there right there so we don't really want to be touching it with greasy hands because the grease tends to build up heat in the area that you've touched so uh, ideally I'd be wearing gloves for this but basically we're going to tie the heat element right here and then put it back together and it'll be good to go for a while it depends on how much they use it depends on how good I tie it uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try and clean up the edges a little bit so there's no slack or whatever on here. So we have a nice clean tie on that. And so, uh, yeah. Okay, so we've got the ends. I straighten out the ends just so I can clean them a little bit better. We've got the ends pretty much cleaned up. Now all I need to do is twist them together. Um, I'm going to spray a little bit of cleaner on them, um, but you don't, I don't normally do this, but I just happen to have the cleaner, so I'm going to spray it on there just to make sure it's going to have a good, nice, firm, whatever, tie, and then tie it together and put it back together and we'll have a heat. Okay, so there's my tie. I, I like to leave the ends open a little bit so they can they don't get as hot. The more wines you put on it, the hotter it's going to be. And you want a few wines nice and tight, kind of like the bottom ones here. And uh, that way there's not too much heat generated. And so, yeah, that's how I like to tie them. And then when you put it back in, you want to make sure that this tie is does not stick out because if it sticks out and touches the the uh, the mount then you're gonna have a short so you don't want that you want to make sure that this does not touch either this or that when you slide it in so you want to like bend this down out of the way this video is for informational purposes only Again, this video is for informational purposes only. Um, if you have any doubt, please contact your local professional. I s always support uh, local professionals. So if you are viewing this um, video from um, somewhere other than California, I recommend that you uh, consult a local professional in order to do this. So we've got the heat element tied and it's in the, the sleeve or flenum and what we're going to do is we're going to check for continuity. We're going to check for continuity on the heat element and we're going to check for a short. So basically to check for a short we take the meter and touch the outside of the case and one of the leads on a heat element. And so we see that we don't have a short, so that's good. That means that that heat, heat element's not shorting out. It's not touching the, the, the outer casing. And if we check here, a continuity across here, and then we see the heat element is making good continuity inside. Okay, so this, here's your disclaimer. Now, once again, the video is for informational purposes only. If in doubt, consult your local professional. And if you take this door off, make sure that you uh, are very careful with the lid switch wires. And because these lid switch wires can break 
They can break your switch if you put too much pressure when you take that front panel out. So we're pretty much back, almost back together now. We're just going to take it through some final, final tests here in a minute. Okay, all back together. This vent is actually an issue. Because I reached in there and I just pulled out that pile of lint. So, you see it goes back. This is, yes, it's got, it's got a lot of lint in it. It's making that work. It makes that heat element work over time to try and heat, dry the clothes. So this line has to be cleaned out and checked. See, it goes underneath the water heater. And I think it goes outside. That is probably longer. That's probably longer than 20 foot. And it's real close to 20 foot. Over 20 foot, you need a booster fan. So I think it goes out, so that's probably about a 15 foot, I'm going to check this real quick. And so that's your heat element trick for today. Thanks for watching. I give phone advice for a fee. If you want to call me, uh, you could send me a donation. I'll give you some advice. And my phone number is 707-443-8347, Pacific Time, 928. Thanks again.